I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And we have stuff for you today for sure. <laughs> it's actually belated stuff. I should have done this show back last Friday on September the 9th. The uh, 6th, I'm sorry, the 6th. Yesterday's the 9th, today's the 10th. I'll get it right eventually. One would hope. At any rate, the 6th was the re-package date, shall we say. That's not the right term, but we'll get there. Of the FCC. More about that in a second. But first, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. We're also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Yes, I have to do that. Just for tradition's sake, if nothing else. Anyway, uh, we're talking about cord cutting today. And the fact that September the 6th, which was a Friday, this past Friday, uh, was when the... Uh, TV stations in your local area, probably, a lot of them, uh, had to switch over to a different frequency. The FCC has been grabbing back frequencies to uh, get set up for the 5G initiative uh, because we need faster interwebs, I'm telling you, particularly for our phones. And so 5G is going to be a big deal. But in order to get ready for that, they had to steal back bandwidth from TV stations and move the TV stations to different frequencies, okay, which is what they have basically mandated, all right? So the TV stations have had to buy new transmitters and do a lot of work, and they're probably going, err, FCC, why do you do these things? But anyway, that's neither here nor there from our point of view. From our point of view, you may have been watching a channel on, let's say, the 5th, and then when you tuned in on the 6th or 7th, it was gone. What's up with that? Well, you need to rescan your channels, okay? And so I have, in my case, I get my uh, over-the-air OTA TV through a Tableau DVR tuner. So there's actually four tuners built into the Tableau. And I have to basically go in into settings and tell it to rescan the channels. Well, when I rescan the channels, I get possibly new ones. I get older ones that may be a little bit better in terms of quality, or in some cases, I've been watching some of the conversation on Facebook. Some people have rescanned and found that they have less channels, and the channels they do get, some of them aren't as strong in terms of signal, and they're pretty frustrated. I am not in falling into that category, though, because weirdly enough, I moved from my previous location. I had a house uh, in the High Point, North Carolina area. I moved to a condominium, and I'm now in my condo. Uh, I'm downsized. I have downsized, okay? So I'm now in a condo. Well, that changed a lot of things. For one thing, I had to move my bookcases, as you can see behind me, which is my old set. Uh, I've now moved it here to the condo. And I've had to redo my networks, and I've had to, I had to buy a new router because my router died in the process, and just a lot of different things that I had to do to move, and that's why I got behind. But it coincided, my moving coincided with this switchover. And so I just had a couple of days to see what my antenna that I am using, because I'm in a condo, I can't mount one outside, so I've rigged a very cool little structure here in the computer room uh, where I have the antenna as high as I can possibly get it up on the ceiling in the closet of the computer room. And uh, believe it or not, I'm actually getting 16 channels clear, uh, basically five green dots across on the Tableau. Uh, very clear, very strong local TV stations. And so that's good. I was impressed. But at any rate, 
it is better than it was with the same configuration that I'd set up. It's better than um, it was before the switchover. Okay, so I actually gained a little strength from certain stations, and I actually got another station that I wasn't getting before, which is pretty cool. Now, it was a station I didn't really care anything about. You know, it wasn't exciting, but it was a new station. Hey, 16. So I'm pretty happy with my over-the-air reception here at the condo. And doing it here at the condo proves you can do it anywhere. You don't have to mount a very fancy TV antenna outside. Now, I do have what's called a uh, an Antop UFO antenna. It's a pretty cool omnidirectional antenna, uh, which I'll show a picture of right here. Um, but at any rate, you know, it, it's neat, and it works really well, and it's got an amplifier built into it. But I've got that over there in the closet. <laughs> And I actually ran cable through the wall and did a special little port here in the wall that it comes through to go into my computer rack where I have the Tableau uh, mounted. So pretty neat how all this works. I'm actually tempted to swing the camera around uh, and show you what my computer rack looks like. It's a bit of a mess wiring-wise. I'm sure that the other computer curmudgeon, my buddy that I used to work with, when I worked in uh, High Point Regional Hospital, which is no longer called High Point Regional, it's High Point Medical Center. They changed the name. I'm out of touch. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he would probably say, dude, that's a mess. Get your wires straightened up. You know, he's such a neat freak. But at any rate, it is a little messy. I've got to get it straightened out. But it looks pretty good in the networking sense. Everything is working, which is good. I like that in a network. So, um, that's a thing that I've been dealing with. Many things I've been dealing with, uh, including getting the new studio here set up with the bookcases and, and getting it where I have, I now have light. I have windows in front of me, which means the light comes in. It's good. Plus, I have my normal lighting as well. But, hey, I like light. Cameras like light. Okay? So, it's a good thing at any rate. Uh, other information about cord cutting. Uh, Disney Plus is coming. That's a big deal. Uh, it's going to have Marvel programming. It's going to have Disney programming. A lot of people are looking forward to Disney Plus. Okay, we're going to have like the Avengers. Uh, some of the characters from the Avengers, like Scarlet Witch and, and uh, Vision, are going to have their own show. Um, Hawkeye is going to have his own show uh, with Falcon, I believe. Uh, there's going to be, there's just going to be lots of cool stuff on Disney Plus. So people are looking forward to Disney Plus, okay? They also, Disney also owns Hulu. And Hulu is now the number one service on Roku that is a paid TV service, okay? And uh, so Disney owns them as well. And the Orville, as I've told you, is going to be on Hulu. So I've got Hulu. I'm probably going to get Disney Plus. I still have Netflix. Uh, I tried YouTube TV, but now I've gone completely to Hulu for all of my other channels that I might need through the internet. And uh, that's pretty much where I'm at, other than over the air TV. So there you go. That's where I'm at, cord cutting wise. But I can recommend Hulu. It's, it's I'm paying the full, so to speak, the full price, which is forty some dollars a month. Uh, for no commercials and all their content and their TV channels and everything. Pretty good deal, actually, com even compared to YouTube TV. Uh, you know, so it worked out pretty well. Anyway, all of that's happening. Then they are going to create a bundle that will have ESPN, Hulu, and Disney Plus for cord cutters. Well, I don't care anything about ESPN. I just don't care about sports at all. So I discovered that if I just pay for Hulu and Disney Plus, I actually come out the same as getting the package, and I don't have to deal with stupid sports that I'm not going to watch anyway. So there you go. But if you're a sports person, go for that package. It's a pretty good deal. All right? So there's that. Uh, let's see. What else we got? Oh, Spectrum. Spectrum is now my internet provider. I'm really grumpy that I had to leave good old North State, northstate.net, who was my ISP 
at the house where I lived, I had a gigabit down, a gigabit up, fiber optic cable to my house. It was very sad having to leave that. But you couldn't get that here at the condo. You know, North State actually said, oh, yeah, we'll install it for you for 500 and some dollars a month. And then they said, but the good thing is if you do that, then all the other people in your complex will be able to get it for the regular $69 price. And I went, what? <laughs> you want me to subsidize you coming into the condo system? No. <laughs> so couldn't do that. That's silly. It's frustrating and silly. But at any rate, come on, North State. Get over here to the condo. At any rate, in the meantime, I had to go with Spectrum. Okay, Spectrum over the cable, believe it or not. Um, I have a, a cable modem, as they call them. It's kind of a misnomer, but that's another whole story. Uh, at any rate, a box that will take the cable feed and bring it in. And I get a gigabit down and about 42 meg up, which is not as good as what I had at the house. But it works. It works for me. And so I like that pretty well, and it's been very, very solid. So kudos to you, Spectrum. But Spectrum, as a cable company, okay, has been raising their rates, and they just raised their rates again. This is the third time this year that they've raised their rates. So I can understand their frustration because people like me are cutting the cord. They're not paying for cable TV. And so in order to keep their revenue up, they've got to increase their price, they think, but if they do that, they're forcing more people to go to the cord-cutting world and use over-the-air TV. So you got to rethink your idea there, Spectrum. I, I'm glad I'm not in your position because I don't know what the answer is to that for you. But for us cord-cutters, it's a whole lot cheaper to cut the cord and do it the way we're doing it now, okay? So anyway, but that's kind of some news to think about, okay? Something to make you go... Hmm. At any rate, uh, so there's that. Let's see what else is happening that I was going to mention. Uh, Spectrum and the uh, bundle and the rescan. You should rescan. Go ahead and do it now if you haven't already, because you may find out that you have picked up some new channels like I did. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. The other thing I was going to mention about that is that the next date. Uh, to keep in mind, will be May of next year, May of 2020, which is not that far off, will be another date to plan to rescan your channels again because about a 1,000 channels went over this time on Friday of last week, but the the uh, a large amount of other channels are going to go on uh, May. I think it's early in May. I don't remember the exact date in 2020. I'll tell you more as we get closer to it to watch out for it and know when to scan again. It doesn't hurt to scan every so often anyway. You know, particularly if you're going to move your antenna a little bit and tweak it. Uh, no harm in doing it, but at least in times like this, you need to do it for sure, okay? So anyway, that's some of the things I wanted to mention to you. I know it's been a fairly short show, but I just wanted to get this information out there as quickly as possible and show you my new... Uh, studio such as it is. I'm going to keep tweaking. I always tweak. And so you'll see more as we add more, okay? So remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill, the Computer Promotion is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.